molecular orbital diagram for O2 with a minus two charge. This is actually the peroxide ion, which does exist. So spoiler alert, it's pretty stable. An oxygen atom on its own has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, meaning that it has two electrons in the 1s subshell, two electrons in the 2s subshell, and four electrons in the 2p subshell. This particular molecule is made out of two O's, so I have to copy out that oxygen there, put a 1s at the same level that it was over here. They are the same atom, or they're equivalent atoms, I should say. So I need my 2p subshells here. This in black are just the atomic orbitals that are going to overlap to make my molecular orbitals. What happens when the 1s orbitals overlap, well, they create sigma 1s bonding orbitals and sigma 1s antibonding orbitals. We show that with an asterisk. The average height of these two lines should be the same as the average height of these two lines, like it should be evenly spread between the two. Uh, I think I got a little lazy there. The 2s's overlap to give you a sigma 2s bonding and sigma 2s antibonding. It's the overlap of the 2p orbitals that I find kids mess up most often. No offense. For oxygen, fluorine, and neon, the lowest energy molecular orbital formed here is a sigma 2p bonding orbital. Then you have pi 2p bonding orbitals, and there are two of them. Pi 2p antibonding orbitals, two of those as well, and a sigma 2p antibonding orbital. For boron, carbon, nitrogen, anything before oxygen, these two are actually flipped. That's due to the atomic radius of oxygen and the, the effective nuclear charge that these orbitals are feeling. That's neither here nor there. Let's fill this with electrons. Because I included the first shell, oxygen's bringing eight electrons total, and there are two of them. The extra minus two charge means that there's two extra on top of that, which gives me 18 electrons total. Let's fill this from the bottom up, elf bow principle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. That is all 18 electrons from the bottom up. Notice that I spread them out before I doubled them up. That's Hung's rule. This is your completed molecular orbital diagram. Your teacher may be asking you for the bond order which is one half of the number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals. Bonding orbitals don't have asterisks. So these two count, and these two count, and these two count, and these four count. That is 10 electrons in bonding orbitals. Antibonding has an asterisk, that's two, four, six, eight. There are eight electrons in antibonding orbitals. 10 and eight make 18 total. 10 minus eight is two. Half of that is one. The bond order here is one. Well, that makes sense based on what I know. I know that hydrogen peroxide has a Lewis diagram that looks like this. And the two oxygens are connected by a single bond. In fact, that O2, two minus ion in the center there is uh, what I'm trying to draw a link here for. But that's neither here nor there. You came for the completed molecular orbital diagram and I graciously gave it to you like the champion I am. Best of luck.